Welcome back to the Who's Yanks. Bienvenue à the Who's Yanks. Yanks. We're talking between Canada soccer and U.S. soccer. And tonight, I know I just released the Canada roster review and my predictions for the window, but um, as well as even talking about uh, for a brief moment, um, the new addition to the Canadian national team, Ismail Kane, and um, from CF Montreal. But I didn't really give him justice. I just kind of gave him like a, a short introduction, but. Um, I didn't do him justice to actually go through and learn about him. So here we are. I'm actually going to do it right in front of We're going to learn together. And uh, so I've got a couple, I've got a few articles and a few information about him that we're going to go over, as well as read that MLS article that I kind of hinted to in the last video. But we're going to do it justice and just go ahead and make a, give him an entirely separate video on his own. That way we can actually learn about him and um, rather than just say his name and just not really learn about him. So. We'll do him justice and we'll give him a video and we'll actually learn about him together. So both of us or all of us will be learning about him and the new uh, or in the recent CF Montreal um, um, big player. So um, in this year, we're going to start with this bio. We're going to talk about you know his roots, where he came from, um, just simple Wikipedia article. And then we're going to um, talk about um, his representation to the MLS or... The MLS article that they wrote about him and John Herdman, um, his why he brought him into the recent Canada roster, and then finally we're gonna close with a John Herdman statement on him. So, three sections to this video. I'm gonna try and make it quick. Try not to keep it too long, but th at the same time, I want to do is Mal Kane justice while giving him the attention he deserves, and especially since he is officially been called up to the Canadian roster for the final games of World Cup qualifying, and so. If he plays, we need to see, you know, what he's about. And without further ado, let's go ahead and start learning about him. So Ismail Kane was born in. Um, sorry, by the way, from butchering these names of cities, towns, or even his himself. Uh, I think it's um, Abidjan, Abidjan, Ivory Coast, or Cote d'Ivory. Uh, he moved to Canada as a child, growing growing up in Montreal. So he is a uh, Montreal um, homeborn, home talent. Where he played youth soccer with CA Saint Laurent. Uh, he represented Quebec at the 2019 Canadian Under 17 Championship. He then went on a trial in Belgium with Gink and uh, Moscron. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but was later forced to return to Canada due to the COVID 19 pandemic, where he began training with CF Montreal under 23 and earned an invite to the first team's training camp in 2021. And then we go to the club career. After spending a few months training with CF Montreal, initially unable to sign a con contract due to some technical uh, technicalities in MLS rules, uh, Kane officially signed a two-year contract with a two-option year on August 13, 2021. However, soon after signing his contract, he suffered a knee injury, which limited his participation in training. After the 2021 season, he then went on to train with Montreal sister club, Bologna, in um, Italy, I believe, uh, Kone made his professional debut and scored his first goal with CF Montreal in a 3 nothing win over Santos Laguna back in February 23rd, 2022 in the, CF, in the 2022 CONCACAF Champions League. So, there we have it. There's a short interview, a nice kind of um, good introduction to who um, Ismail Kone is, as well as the uh, work that he's already done for CF Montreal and now we see why he's kind of earned a spot for the Canadian national team so far but we'll get, before we even start uh, breaking him down more we'll go ahead and read the article from uh, MLS so the one that I mentioned in the last video by the way if you haven't checked out the Canadian roster video I highly suggest you do so um, but this article is just hinted to but in this video I'm actually going to read it so hope you guys enjoy at CF Montreal breakout star Ismael Kone gets the call up with Canada on the brink of work qualification. John Herdman is normally a man of habit, so it was not surprising to see only two changes to the Canadian men's national 25-man team roster for the March window of the final CONCAC World qualifying. One of those changes announced on Sunday afternoon was significant, though uh, it was 19-year-old Ismael Kone who, was, um, who had been in... Uh, Relevation in CF Montreal's um, midfield to begin the 2022 season. He made the cut in place of his club 
uh, Samuel Piet, by the way, Samuel Piet, uh, who is still nursing a foot injury he suffered during January's qualifier. Didn't know that he, I didn't even notice until now that he, that's why he wasn't called up, but now we know he's suffered a foot injury, unfortunately. There were growing calls for Kane to be included despite his relative inexperience at a young age. Throw he's proven to be uh, po uh, polished beyond his years. Polished beyond his years. Oh my god. Uh, one thing that I have seen consistently is just a fearless mindset, Herbman said, of his newest recruit. I think the game this weekend versus Atlanta United, he was able to show that sort of resilience that I think um, is really important to be a part of this team where you can make a mistake and come back and produce a performance like it. The 3-3 draw with Atlanta United was as, uh, Jesus, uh, soliciting this, sorry, I'm butchering this, um, it was as, uh, God, it was as uh, good as they come as MLS, holy frick, it's 3 in the morning over here, guys. Um, it was Kane's seventh appearance and sixth start in all competitions on Sunday, Saturday afternoon at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, and he made the most of it by uh, being involved in all three of Montreal's goals and one of the most dominant performances to date. By the way, if you haven't checked out that CF Montreal versus the Lane United game, it's really, really, it's it's good, but it's sad for CF Montreal. They were winning three to one, and then Lane United stormed back and just tied it three three, but. I mean, it was a good, it was a darn good game. Uh, what a banger, by the way, by the 19-year-old. Um, they're about to talk about him here. The 19-year-old uh, set up Montreal's opener with a uh, sky, uh, sky ball, through ball on the counter. Scored the, sc um, scored the at the time, go-ahead goal, then drew the penalty that made a 3-1 for the visitors. Ultimately, Montreal coughed up the lead, but a silver lining from the draw was Kone's majestic display. Even discounting the assistance and the goal, Kane was everywhere. He hit some terrific progressive passes uh, through Atlanta's midfield, covered tons of ground defensively, and inter and intervened at decisive times. Um, they said, not bad for a youngster with less than 500 minutes of professional experience under his belt. Herbin believes that the young midfielder can contribute across this three-match window and what will be a monumental week for Canadian soccer. A win over Costa Rica on Thursday guarantees Canada's spot at the 2022 World Cup, which as I said in the Canada video, all they need is three points. If they get against Costa Rica, Jamaica, or Panama, just get it done. Just get the three points and move on. That's all you need. Um, and they said, although a draw coupled with Panama failing to beat Honduras and the U.S. MNT not defeating Mexico, uh, would be enough for La Hoosh to book their final tickets to Qatar, even in losing to um, in San Jose to a, uh, revi uh, a revitalized Tico side that could be sufficient. Um, as, in as encouraging as Kane's news is for Canada, there is still one major uh, conundrum. Stefan Estacchio and Richie Larea have been uh, overrepresent or ever ever present. God, man. For Herdman in this cycle, yet they are lacking rhythm compared to previous windows. Luckily for Herdman, Estacchio started in Porto's second leg draw with Leon and the Europa League on Thursday and was an occasional second half substitute before then. So the midfield, Maelstra, is less of a concern. Lorea is the big worry. He has yet to debut, uh, debut for Nottingham Forest after joining from Toronto FC. In January, and yeah, as I said, this is a problem, guys. I mean, uh, he's looking for players. Herbman's trying to look for players who are informed, and unfortunately, Raya hasn't quite been informed, or he hasn't been playing even. So many people say that he should have stayed here at TFC, but I mean, yeah, he's rather go. I mean, you go to a brand club, but you sit at the bench, so that that really hurts. It's like you go to a, you go to a nice club, but at the same time, if you're just gonna ride the pine, it, it doesn't really do anything. It just it just, it's, you might as well not be playing at all. Or just go by from playing in minutes at TSC, which it's sad, unfortunately, right now for him. Um, in January's last um, appearance for West for Canada in the win over El Salvador in February 20, uh, February 2nd. Uh, plus, only on the other hand out, and uh, right back was called into the squad, Alistair Johnson, who is predominantly a center back with the national team. The syndicate. Uh, that indicates that Larea will likely be a key starter again. 
you always uh, you have always got these con got those concerns as a coach Herman admitted but I think you don't underestimate either the power of the human will or the power of the human will and the human potential players like that can turn it uh, oh my god guys players like that can turn it on when they need to what we uh, what we know is they might not be able to turn it on for uh, 95 to 100 minutes but uh, there will be a period in the game where these where these players will suffer a bit, uh, but at the end of the day, they have shown a resilient mindset, and I believe that the science and everything that science has told us, we will not be where we are at now. The other no newcomer of sorts is Minnesota United's goalkeeper Saint Sinclair, which, as I said, he had an outstanding performance against the New York Red Bulls, and go see that game. That's another one that you guys can see. Though he has been involved with past squads uh, during qualifying, um, he having started in Minnesota United's last two games, both wins while keeping clean sheets, surely have helped save St. Clair's uh, reclaim to the number three role for Canada, while Montreal Sebastian Breza was knocking on the door. And they said if St. Clair is starting and in form, he is easily one of the best three keepers in the pool. And like I said, it's good to see um, him work his way back into the Canadian uh, pool as Maxime Crepo and um, Milan Boyan um, were the starting keepers. Although James Pantamist too has also been kind of there, but in and out, not really so much. As well as um, Hassal, of getting his first name, which is bad. Um, unfortunately for the 24-year-old, though, he has Milan Boyan and Maxime Crepo ahead of him, as I just said. Alfonso Davies remains unavailable, which I said is a really, really unfortunate situation in the, in the video I just released. Um, he's still recovering from his, um, basically his mild heart condition um, after he was, di that was diagnosed in mid-January. But he has resumed individual training last week and he even posted a video of himself training in the Bayern Munich uh, facility, which brings hopeful that the Canadian sensation will be involved in the Champions League quarterfinals and fingers and toes crossed. Should Canada qualify for the World Cup in Qatar? We were desperate to have him and to be a part of clinching a World Cup berth, Herman said, to help him experience all of the sort of effort he has put in over these years. But there are bigger things ahead, and his health is number one priority. And um, I think uh, all of us just wants to make sure he comes back in full health and is the best place for him and Bayern Munich. And then the article ends with saying Canada finished the January qualifiers with maximum points without Davies. As I said in the Canada video, they've been doing really well without Davies or with Davies, you know. So either way, Canada's proven that they can get they can get points even without key players. And they said even with questions surrounding Lorraine and Estacio's respective fitnesses, the mental resolve of the players have carried them this far. Another 90 minutes of determined, locked in focus shouldn't be too big of a chore. And as I said, they just cannot afford to choke this. And Canada really, all they need is, as I said, three points. That's all they need. Is it is against Costa Rica, Jamaica, or Panama. One of them. You gotta just get it done. Just get three points. And then finally, I want to close with Herdman's statement, which I believe he said in the MLS article. He said, for me, I haven't seen a profile like that from a midfielder in, in the time that I've been here. He's definitely someone that I can think can contribute to help this team. So, very good by um, Herdman there. You know, he's once again relying on young talent, and I always, it's always good to see young talent and young new faces get their shot in the lineup, which, I mean, and it's good to see them develop. Like, Ike Upo, can't wait to see him continue to develop. And, but um, Ismael Kone is just the uh, latest addition, and I'm really, really hoping he gets to see some playing time. I don't know why I haven't been keeping an eye on him, but. Now that, as I said in the last video, now that he's made the radar, I will definitely keep an eye on him. And now I got to keep an eye on CF Montreal too, despite them being Toronto FC's rivals. But, hey, he's representing Team Canada, so I'll keep an eye on him. And who knows, if he keeps up the good work, this guy might be looking for a trade to Europe soon. Hopefully he's playing, though, and not just riding the pine like um, Richie Larrea is. But we'll soon find out. But... Overall, Ismail Kane is a new latest addition, youngster to this Canadian roster, and it's always good to see young and new faces. But there you have it, a quick summary of who he is and um, what he does and what he can do. And it's always good to see 
as a, as a, once again I apologize for butchering the readings as I'm trying to try the best guys 3.30 as I'm saying as I'm currently recording this over here in the morning but I just had to record the video as I couldn't release the Canada roster video without I mention him and then not even talk about who he is gotta give him the respect he deserves and gotta introduce him that way we can learn about him and know who he is together so here's this video hope you guys enjoyed it so if you like this video make sure you like share subscribe tell all your friends about it and also tell all your friends that Ismail Kone has been called up to the Canadian national team and let's see what he can do also get some sleep